you are looking at a bunch of end-user license agreements, end-user license agreements, or sometimes known as ULAs. When you buy software or install software, install stuff on your computer, often this thing will pop up. And it's one of these things where everybody just says, okay, next. Most everybody says that, or I agree, right? And so what is this thing that pops up when we install software and to what are we agreeing when we click the I agree button or click the next button, click the checkbox that says, I accept the terms in the license agreement. I mean, have you ever stopped to actually read one of these things? It's kind of crazy because if you go to Wikipedia and you look up end user license agreement, uh, you will find uh, down here under criticism that one of the most common criticisms of end-user license agreements is that they could be really long and nobody devotes the time to thoroughly read them. Hardly anybody devotes the time to thoroughly read them. Excuse me. So, for instance, the PayPal end-user license agreement is 36,275 words long. Well, there are 250 words in a page. Right, so that's about one third of a no novel length, and so if we were to take uh, thirty-six thousand two hundred seventy-five and divide by two hundred and fifty, we get one hundred and forty-five pages. So the end-user license agreement for PayPal is one hundred and forty-five pages long. How would you like to read that so that you can now use PayPal? I'm not interested in reading it. In May two thousand eleven, iTunes agreement was fifty-six pages long, right? Which is just kind of crazy. So what is up with these end-user license agreements? Well, the first thing you need to know is that ULA stands for end-user license agreement, end-user license agreement. And the important part here is license, license. Because when you purchase software, you're, you don't own the software. You own the right to use the software. You own a license to use it. So there's an important distinction there. Right, You own the right to use the software. For instance, if I purchased Microsoft Word, I do not now own Microsoft Word. I can't do whatever the hell I want with Microsoft Word. If I could, I would go down to uh, a busy corner intersection and after burning uh, thousands of copies of the software, which I think I now own, I would put up a sign and I would say Microsoft Office, now only $10. Right, and I would sell uh, uh, the software that I own, but I can't do that legally in America. In other countries, they don't respect uh, these licenses, these laws, and so you can go to other countries and buy pirated software um, where people are literally on street corners selling copies of software that they burn. But you don't own the software when you buy software, you own a license, uh, the right to use software. And so what you're agreeing to when you see this end user license agreement is basically uh, certain terms and conditions that say you could use the software in these ways, you could use the software in these ways. And, uh, you know, the question becomes exactly what are you agreeing to? Because you, there's a, there's a, a disparity of information, a disparity of power. The people who write these license agreements they uh, have lawyers and they're writing one license agreement and this is their company and they can invest you know a fair amount of time and money to write the license agreement you are installing a piece of software you need that software often and uh, and you don't have lawyers on staff to read the agreement nor could you like renegotiate it probably if you didn't agree with it it's like you either use it and agree to their terms or you don't a take it or leave it kind of approach and so, you know, when it's something that we need to use, like, okay, I got to use Microsoft Word, where does that leave you? You know, uh, I guess it leaves us with the, the debate about how good is capitalism and Adam Smith's invisible hand. And do market forces actually create efficiency? And, uh, and uh, where are the inefficiencies and inequalities? So it's just kind of an interesting thing. You just kind of have to agree to it in user license agreement. And there have been some interesting in user license agreements like GameStation. If you go to Google and type in GameStation ULA Soul, at the end of uh, GameStation's in user license agreement, they had this By placing an order via this website, you agree to grant us a non transferable option to claim now and forever your immortal soul. <laughs> and like 8,800 people agreed to that before somebody else. Let's see. Let's see if that's right. Uh, before. 
So April Fool's joke, Game Station, 7,500 users agreed to it before, you know, uh, the, the ruse came out. So that's kind of an interesting thing. And uh, let's see, where is, uh, is there anything else here that's interesting to show you? Anything else that's interesting to show you? No, that's it. And then PC Pitstop put in their end-user license agreement. If you're actually reading this, call the company and tell us, and we'll give you money. And so somebody called and got a $1,000 reward. Uh, the fact that we don't read these end-user license agreements uh, led to uh, South Park doing an episode called Human Centipad, Human Centipad. And uh, the Human Centipad episode had whatever this guy is agree to uh, the license agreement without reading it. And what he agreed to was to allow Apple employees to experiment upon him. And that was part of the license agreement. Facebook's license agreement. So if you go to Google and search for Facebook license privacy, what are you agreeing to when you use Facebook? Well, you could read what you're agreeing to when you read Facebook. And uh, Facebook says you own all of the content and information you post on Facebook. And you can control how it is shared through your privacy and application settings. So let's think like a lawyer here for a moment. You own all the content and information you post on Facebook. Great, I always own it. And I can control it through your privacy and application settings. Okay, so where do I get to control my content? I can control how it is shared. This is where I get to control how it's shared, through privacy and application settings. And I own it. Right, and this is this is the one little area where I could control how it's shared, right? And uh, that doesn't mean that because I own it and I could control how it's shared in this one little area, it might not be outside of my control in other areas, right? So that's kind of how lawyers think. And even though I own it, guess what? Facebook can still do whatever the hell they want with it because, and this is where like lawyers are tricky with their wording, wording, right? It says here that you grant us, Facebook, a non-exclusive, transferable, sub-licensable, royalty-free, worldwide license to use any intellectual property content that you post on or in connection with Facebook uh, IP license. This IP license ends when you delete your IP content or your account unless your content has been shared with others and they have not deleted it. Right, so that's kind of crazy. Facebook can do whatever they want with your information, whatever they want with your information. And so it's a, you know, I mean, I understand why that has to be there from Facebook's perspective, but it's just something to think about. Even though you still own it, you could control how it's shared in this one little arena, they could still do whatever the heck they want with it, and you, you have no uh, recourse of action because you agreed to this by using Facebook. So, you know, that's no big deal, but it's just something to be aware of that uh, you know, corporations set the rules for the game. And uh, if you play by the rules, then you're gonna be fine. But if you don't play by the rules, uh, it could come back and bite you. It might not come back and bite you, but it might, it may. It depends upon what you've agreed agree to. The most important thing to know from all this is that ULA stands for End User License Agreement and that you own a license. You don't own the software, you own a license, which is the right to use whatever you purchased. It's the same way with music, right? You, you, you buy Bruce Springsteen's new album. You don't own Bruce Springsteen's new album. You own the right to listen to it, right? In your home or whatever you agreed to. So that's an important question. What are you agreeing to? You heard me mention intellectual property. Well, what the heck is intellectual property? We're gonna talk about it a little bit more further into this course. But intellectual property, also sometimes called IP. So in Facebook's uh, privacy agreement, they talked about IP. Intellectual property is, uh, you know, is different from real property. So the best way to understand intellectual property, or one way to understand intellectual property, is to compare it to it, its uh, other half, which is real property. So you hear about intellectual property and real property. And real property is like real estate, right? Real estate is real property. This pen is real property. This is real property. My watch is real property. It's real because I could pick it up. Intellectual property, you can't pick up ideas. You can't pick up a song, right? I could pick up the piece of paper where the lyrics are written on the song. I could pick up the CD where the song is burned onto, right? Or I could pick up my flash drive that has the song on here as an MP3. But I cannot pick up what is really truly valuable about the song, which is the lyrics, the tempo, the rhythm, 
how it's sung, you know, how it's played, all of that stuff, that's the realm of ideas. And uh, ideas can be owned. And so we have intellectual property. And uh, that's what intellectual property is, and it encompasses all kinds of ideas, any idea. These words right here that I'm speaking right now, I own them. I own them. They are mine. And you can't do anything with them because it's copyright me. <laughs> These are my words right now, right? Like, I own this content. And uh, you talk, you own that content, you come up with ideas, you own that content. You write a poem, you write a song, you write a novel, you write a screenplay, you write software, uh, you record a song, you make a movie, right? All of that stuff is intellectual property. And, uh, you know, so software is intellectual property. And, and, and uh, when you sell software, you're selling the right to use it. Or when you sell intellectual property, you're selling the right to use it often under a license agreement. So that's what uh, intellectual property is, and it's good to know about. In relation to end-user license agreements, it's also good to know about piracy. I'll just touch on it briefly, which is stealing intellectual property. So if I agree to an end-user license agreement that I've purchased a license to use software, but then uh, I go make copies of it and sell it to a whole bunch of people, I am a pirate. I'm a pirate. And uh, if I wanted to, I could wear the little patch and start singing the ho-ho-ho song in the bottle of rum. But... Uh, even if I download stuff, right, like I download songs, I download movies, I download software, um, that's piracy also. I'm stealing intellectual property. Somebody else owns that. I didn't pay them to use it, and I'm just taking it. So that's intellectual property. Not all software is, uh, is owned and sold, right? Um, and some, some software doesn't have a license agreement on it at all. So all these are different categories of software, and all commercial software is pretty much going to come with a license agreement. It's commercial, it's for commerce, it's being sold. That's commercial software, right? Shareware is a software that you could use for a little bit of time, but after a while, a fee may be requested, right, for continued use. Freeware is software that's available free of charge. Both of these categories, somebody else owns it but they're choosing to either share it or just to make it free, and you'll probably agree to a license agreement when you install that software. Public domain software is software that is owned by the public. It's in the domain of the public, the public domain. And, uh, and usually, uh, usually there is no license agreement. I don't know. I mean, like, I haven't installed any public, all, I haven't installed all public domain software that's out there in the world but uh, I can't see why there would be a license agreement on it because nobody owns it. We all own it. That's public domain. Finally, there's open source software. It's just another category of software, which is good to know about. And open source software is created by the community. The source code is open for anybody to use. You can read the definition right here of open source software. And uh, open source software would still have a license, right? Like somebody owns it, probably, like the final version or not. I don't know. Who owns open source software? <laughs> Who would own Linux? Because there's all kinds of companies that are uh, selling, not selling, but sharing their favorite flavors of, of Linux. And did, did I agree to a license agreement? Did we agree to one when we installed uh, Ubuntu? Probably. Um, let's look for that. Ubuntu, like uh, Ubuntu Ula. There we go. Ubuntu Ula? Question mark. In user license agreement. Uh, for Ubuntu users, license agreement. Licensing, there we go. Yeah, so Ubuntu's got licensing that you'll agree to if you install that, install that also. All right, so uh, you have just learned about uh, application software, ownership rights and licensing, ownership rights and licensing. So we saw the different categories commercial, shareware, freeware, public domain, open source, different categories of ownership. We learned what piracy was. We learned what intellectual pro property is. And we also learned about the end user license agreement, including some funny instances of, uh, you know, people making a joke out of the end user license agreement, which in reality, I think it actually is. You can read about some of those jokes for uh, end user license agreement. This is where I learned about them right here at the bottom of Wikipedia. Uh, some interesting stuff, some interesting stuff. All right, so that's in-user license agreement, software licensing, piracy, and software ownership categories.